How do you evaluate a gun at a show? Steve Fiesta explains the one-minute checkout. We have an AYA as a number two, right? Correct. And, I mean, obviously this gun is meant for on fire, but or it's in really excellent It's in great shape. shape. But in this particular gun, and it's shotgun like this, I mean, the first thing you look for, if this was an older shotgun, you'd look at the stock and make sure it hadn't been cut off. Right, John? Yeah. That's pretty much the first thing you look for. What's the second thing you look for? Just condition of it. Whether just, it's got, you know, scratched up or just... And the overall condition of it. If the barrels are really, really bad shape, and this isn't in great shape, then why would the wood be mint? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. So somebody refinished the wood and vice versa. If the wood was really, really in poor condition and everything else looked fantastic, there'd be a problem there too. So the moral to the story on the 60 second CAT scan, everything should add up. No one area should be better than another. The whole condition factor should pretty much be equal throughout the gun. And on a handgun, it might be a little bit tougher, tougher than a long gun, but um, in, gen gun. in general, does it make sense? Does it make sense? If it's a 100-year-old gun and it looks like that, you go, hmm. <laughs> Not all guns at the show are for sale. Displays by groups which collect certain guns, or certain makers, are there just to share the passion of collecting. Well, the Rue Collectors Association celebrate our 35th anniversary this year. Uh, we've got collectors from all around the country. Uh, we come here to the Tulsa Show, great Joe Wanamaker show. Uh, every year in November, yeah. uh, we bring our displays here. We have uh, 13 displays, 15 tables, uh, collectors from all around the country, from Washington State to Florida to Pennsylvania, Ohio. People come here every year. Yes. Uh, a lot of following uh, from the Ruger collectors uh, for a newer brand that really started in the, in the 40s. When was the first Ruger built? 1949. It's not that old, no. but they're very strong. They got as many members as the Cold Collectors Association. And I think it's a great way for a younger collector to get involved in a top shelf trademark by not spending a lot of money. You'll hear some gun show regulars say that you'll ruin the value of a gun by refinishing it. That's certainly not true when an expert does the work. Turnbull restorations today and we have Keith with us and Keith I know you do some of the best restoration in the business. Tell us about your Winchesters briefly and what do you think of the value once you're done with a gun like this? I see you have an original 76. We have an original here and then this, this is the answer to the $64,000 question. We'll start with something that's, you know, from a collector standpoint, its value's gone. Yes. And we will... Or at least down to the minimum. Down to the minimum. Down to the minimum. This yeah. gun is probably, what, still $2,500? $2,500 rifle. That's correct. And we will take and evaluate it. And obviously, we'll keep all the good parts that we can using as much of the original parts as we can. And we will restore it, as this one here is. This is a restored 76. And it'll be new wood, new barrel. We have all the roll dies, remarking the barrel addresses, the caliber marks. Uh, American black walnut, as it would have left the factory with, hand cut checkering, bone charcoal, color case hardening, rust which, gluing. Which they are very, very famous for. This is very, very tough to do. This is a deluxe gun because it's got case colors, it's got checkering. This is a standard model because it doesn't have checkering. This gun would have come originally with bluing, but a 76 original gun right now, original gun that looks anywhere close to this, is into the six digits for these days, you know? So the question for the audience is, what did you rather have? Would you rather have something like this that looks, that is a real gun that's been refurbished absolutely, authentically for 16,000? Or would you rather have something like this in your cabinet for $2,500? Or would you rather have the Grand Kahuna for $150,000? That's the question. Steve, this was my first Wanamaker arm show. You're right, it is unbelievable. You told me I wouldn't believe it, you're right. It's incredible. Now you've been to a lot of these, so what trends are you seeing when you kind of do a wrap up on this show this year? What's going on? My take on this show, the November show, is that not quite as crazy as it normally is. Okay. Normally the aisle's a little bit busier than this. I'm not seeing the ammunition frenzy sure. that well, I did a couple knew that years was ago. Down. That good guns have gone down a little bit. Yeah. They have okay. slipped. Okay. They haven't slipped a lot, but they have slipped. Average guns have gone down quite a bit, mm -hmm. and bad guns are just shooters now. Yeah. Add up the parts, and that's it. 
Okay. But I will say, the good news is that the really, really super guns, the best of the best Winchesters, the right. engraved Colts, the, you know, the super, super Weatherbees and the Remington's. They're holding their values? You know, not only are they holding their values, they're going up a little bit, but the uh, the way they're going up is through the auction. Ah, not, not, not at the gun, the gun show. show. So, no. but it's a good time to be a buyer, is it not? I think it is, but you've got to do your homework, yep. spend every yep. dollar like it's your last. As always. And, you know, have a little fun out there. And fun it is. Whether buying, selling, trading, or just looking, the Wanamaker Arms Show in Tulsa has become the place for folks who just love guns. Jack Nicholson? That kind of does look like Jack Nicholson. It is. Oh, yeah. Everybody tells me that. <laughs>